Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about reaction mechanisms. And suppose we have the following reaction. So we have CO plus NO2 yields CO2 plus NO. Now, the question that we need to ask ourselves is what's, what's happening in this reaction? What is going on at the molecular level? So intuitively, we might say that the CO molecule sort of grabs an oxygen from the NO2 to yield a carbon with one more oxygen and a nitrogen with one less oxygen. And given this equation alone, that's a pretty reasonable assumption. But in reality, that's really not what's going on at all. So this overall chemical equation, what does that tell us? On the left side we have the reactants and on the right side we have the products. And basically all this reaction is telling you is what you have at the beginning of the reaction and what you have at the end of the reaction. It doesn't really tell you much about what happened. In fact, it doesn't really tell you anything at all about what happens in between. So that is where a reaction mechanism comes in. A reaction mechanism is the series of individual steps by which the overall reaction occurs. So if we look at the mechanism for this reaction here, the mechanism for this reaction looks like this. This particular me uh, mechanism is composed of two individual steps, and we call these steps elementary steps. And the good thing about elementary steps is that ele elementary steps cannot be broken down into simpler steps. So they, they basically occur as they are written. So the first elementary step says that we have <clears throat> two NO2 molecules, so basically an NO2 molecule collides with another NO2 molecule to produce an NO3 molecule and an NO molecule. And then the second step says that the NO3 molecule that was produced in this first step reacts with a CO molecule to produce an NO2 molecule and a CO2 molecule. Now one of the requirements of a reaction mechanism is that the sum of the elementary steps must be equivalent to the overall chemical equation. So, in other words, if I add these two individual equations together, I should get this overall chemical equation back. So let's double check this mechanism and see if the, if the elementary steps do indeed um, sum up to the overall chemical equation. So, um, to better illustrate this, I'm going to rewrite the left uh, side of the first equation. Instead of 2NO2, let, let's just rewrite that as an NO2 plus another NO2. And that might help us visualize this a little bit better. So we're going to add up everything. We're going to add both of these equations to the other, to, to, to each other. So that means we're going to add up all the reactants and we're going to add up all the products and we're going to see uh, what cancels out. And <clears throat> it looks to me like one of the NO2 molecules in the first step of the reaction on the left side is going to cancel out with the only NO2 molecule on the right side, which occurs in the second elementary step. And then it looks like we also have... Uh, the NO3 molecules, they're also going to cancel out. So we have this one here on the right side of the first equation, and then this one here on the left side of the second equation. And if we cover up those four things, we see that we do indeed get what we started with. We have a CO, an NO2, a CO2, and an NO molecule. Now, these substances, such as NO2 and NO3, at least one of the NO2s and NO3, NO3 for sure, these substances that are produced in one step of the reaction and consumed in another, these are what we call reaction intermediates.
And reaction intermediates, they do not uh, show up in the balanced chemical equation overall. But obviously they play a fairly important step in the overall mechanism of the chemical reaction. So let's get into uh, the properties of elementary steps uh, just a little bit more. So in general, elementary steps are characterized by their molecularity. And the molecularity is the number of reactant molecules that collide together in an elementary step. So there's a couple of different kinds of uh, molecularity in, uh, that an elementary step can have. So the first one, and perhaps the most simple one, is called unimolecular. And in a unimolecular elementary step, we simply have A becoming products. So that means that the, the one A molecule decomposes into something. The second type of molecularity that we can have is called bimolecular. And bimolecular means we now have two molecules colliding with each other. So suppose I have a molecule of A plus another molecule of A. So I have an A colliding with another A, and that gives us our products, whatever they are. That is an example of a bimolecular elementary step. And then we could also have an, a bimolecular elementary step in which A reacts with something else. So we could have something that looks like this. Now there's another type of molecularity, and we call that termolecular. See if I can get in there. Termolecular. And termolecular means you have three different molecules colliding together. And termolecular el elementary steps are very rare. And the reason why they're so rare is because the probability of three molecules colliding together is very, very slim. So let's examine uh, unimolecular and bimolecular um, elementary steps just a, a little bit more. So although the rate law for an overall chemical equation cannot, cannot be determined just from the balanced chemical equation alone. Remember, the rate law for a, a general reaction has to be determined only by experiment. The rate law for the elementary steps, however, can be determined just from their balanced chemical equations. So in our, un, our, in our only uh, unimolecular um, elementary step, we can say, we can express the rate law as rate equals K times the concentration of A. So that is the rate law for a unimolecular elementary step for whichever reactant that you have. Let's also go over the rate laws for our bimolecular elementary steps. So let's start with this first one here. So what is the rate law for this elementary step? A plus A yields products. If you guessed that the rate is equal to K times the concentration of A squared, then you're right. Now let's also look at the bimolecular elementary step in which we have uh, two different molecules reacting to form products. Whoops, I didn't even get that in the page, did I? Okay. And we say here that the rate 
is equal to, the con to k times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. So that is the rate law for unimolecular and bimolecular elementary steps. So termolecular elementary steps also have uh, rate laws, but like I said, they are very rare.